welcome back to the channel. It's, hmm. well, if you'd have asked me an hour, an hour ago, I would have said it's clear blue skies, but the forecast is pretty good. So Monica and I are going to go for a ride to a seaside, I don't even know if you call it a town, a seaside village called Warberswick, right on the coast. Beautiful spot for a ride. It's about an hour from here. But before we go, I have a product that is something I've wanted to try for a long time. This is from a company called Sizap. It's a Latvian company. And what they've created here is a security tracking rider performance product. And it's, it's something that really does kind of tick every single box for what I've been looking for. It is motorcycle security. It's constant updates on any type of movement of the motorbike when you're away from the bike. It's got an app that will hook up to this 63 gram device, tiny. So this is what you get. Attaches to the different battery terminals, put that into your bike, register, by just scanning that, register with the app. And this, what this does is, let me turn the laptop to show you. It will tell you your battery level, it will let you know if there's any movement at all from the motorbike. So if you're away from the bike, if your bike's parked up and your bike moves or there's any motion detected at all, it will immediately pin you on the app. On top of that, it will do a lot of other things like record your the routes that you've gone on. So you can go on a nice route all around the country lanes and this will actually record the route and save the exact route that you've done. Loads of other interesting stuff, but the, it's really the, the security side of things that's going to be most of interest to me. I'll go through a few of the other things. It's got, you know, you can plan trips so that you can share the trips with friends. Another big thing, no monthly contract. See, that's a big thing for me. You install it yourself, that's all it is. There's an app, there's no monthly contract, there's no complicated wiring, plugging it into, for example, the ECU and changing all the wiring, anything like that. All that happens is you plug this into the battery. So, I'm gonna get the app, I'll go downstairs, and I'm going to be testing this out today while we're on a ride. Now, anytime I do something to the bike, Monica always asks, how long would that take? And my reply is usually, two minutes, maybe five minutes maximum. And then I'm usually down at the bike at the end of my mental limit, five hours later, <laughs> literally having a breakdown. So, don't know if it's too brave saying we'll do a step-by-step -step guide here in real time, but we'll be as honest as possible. So, take off the seat, connect that to the battery, let's see the reality. Okay, here we go. Disconnect the battery. I actually lost the terminal screws for my battery somehow when I was doing work on it, so. Just found these ones. Flathead ones from b &Q. Not quite as easy, but they just about do the trick. So, these two coming off. Right, so those off, this now will be connected to each one. Actually, I didn't even realize, you don't actually with this need to take off all of the wiring like I've just done because you just slide it in instead. Mistake number one for me. Okay, okay, positive on. I know there's a way around to do it. Positive first, negative first. I always forget and the reality is I'm too lazy to check online which way around it goes. So I just do whatever I fancy. Both terminals connected. 
Here's, th so this has a sticker here. You can stick it somewhere on the bike. I considered sticking it to the battery, but if it gets to a battery, as the Bonneville sometimes do, it may be awkward. So I'm going to put it under there, like that. Put the wiring over it, and that, that's the setup. Very nice. Put the seat back on. So I downloaded the app upstairs and I entered the bike details, the registration, things like that. And this beautiful little image of a bike has popped up. So this is the Bonneville. And what can we do from here? It shows, actually, this is an interesting thing. This will also show the battery voltage. So I'll get a complete real time battery voltage check. So 12.8 volts. Sleepy, it says it's not riding at the moment loads and loads of different stuff it shows location okay so we're going to move the phone away from the track and monica will be sitting over on that seat there i'll give monica my phone hooked up to the bike and i'm going to pretend to be a thief stealing the bike i need to get on there before it locks up i'm a thief stealing a bike Yeah. So you can shut now. I hope it showed up where Monica was sitting because 10 seconds after I moved the bike from there to there, got a text and got an alert on the app. Complete peace of mind. We're gonna go and get ready. Absolutely starving. We'll find somewhere to eat before we get to all this week, but that, that feels really good. I haven't actually locked the bike downstairs, just knowing that the bike's now connected, you know, to something. So there's some way of me knowing if it's being moved, if it's been taken. It's a good feeling. Oh, price-wise, actually, £150 for that with no monthly subscription or €180. Euros, and there's a 10% discount code. We'll include it in the description and the link will be, or the code will be right here, but use code FREDDY for 10% off. And that will be valid for two weeks from the date this video goes live. another sign of a great place to eat. Yeah. Queues along the street. This place is always packed. Grazing sheep again. We were going to eat in Warbuswick, but we're too hungry and I don't fancy one hour ride being so hungry. So we're gonna eat here and then we'll head off. parking and this is the busiest I've ever seen Warbuswick. I think it's only, it's probably classed as a village. I'm amazed there's even capacity to have all of these people in it. And I've just spotted something behind Monica. If you know, then you know. 
1989 Peugeot 205 GTI 1.9 litre. <laughs> the one to have. And I remember, probably when I was about 23 years old, you could pick one of these up for about seven, eight hundred pounds. I'm not going to have that anymore. How much are they? They're going to be 10k. I'm guessing it. I'll, I'll go on eBay and check later. These will be a few thousand, definitely. Surely at least 5k, maybe 10 for a good one. And this is a stunning one. We used to, as a family, spend our summers in Southwold. And Southwold, if Monica just pans over, is just opposite the water. And they're about 50 meters apart, but they're separated by a stretch of water and the only way to cross the water is by one man rowing his boat across with a few people every time and that's why you'll see a queue of people waiting to cross. Things have changed since I've last done it. I've just seen both boats are now motorized, so completely wrong. How old am I? The last time I got on this was probably about almost 30 years ago. There was a man, a little old, probably 65 year old man, who'd be rowing his boat across with six people on it, drop six people off, row back, and he'd do that for hours a day, just rowing people back and forth from Walberswick to Southwell. Yeah, and now it's two motorized boats. So I guess I'm not surprised, but shows how long I've actually got, or how long ago I've actually got that boat. Times change. To give you some idea of perspective, let's say it's 50 meters from Walberswick to Southwold. If you want to drive to this point 50 meters away, the other side of the water, it's about a 30 minute drive because you've got to go all the way back, a really long stretch of road, all the way around and then all the way back, a very long stretch of road to get to Southwold. So it really is a long way. So these boats definitely help connecting people. I did a quick auto trader search for a good condition 1989 Peugeot 205 1.9 16,000 pounds if like me you were growing up driving in about the year 2000s or something and the cars to have with those Peugeot 205s or the Ford Fiestas, the Ford Escorts from the late 80s and you held on to one of those and went through the period when they were worthless of about £750 or so but held on to it until today, go into the stratosphere.
a lot of people here with lines going into the water just sitting on the edge here and also over at the southward bit where we just were and that's because you tie a piece of rock to a piece of string you put a bit of bait in it drop it in leave it for a few minutes and it's called crabbing you will get a huge amount of crabs i remember doing it as a child sometimes you can get 40 crabs in about a one one hour sitting or something like that absolutely full of crabs around here I should say you let all of them back in the water afterwards full you basically fill a, a jug full of water catch the crabs and then put them all back afterwards seen a few houses and on the front of the houses there have been signs saying say no to Sizewell Sea. Big yellow kind of banners up on the houses and I wondered what those were so I just googled it. Apparently there's a proposed massive new nuclear power plant that may be built somewhere in Suffolk. I couldn't figure out where. Yeah it looks like the residents aren't happy. There's I think Warbiswick is is often kind of overlooked because it's right next to Southwold and Southwold is kind of the bigger brother it's just physically bigger there are more shops more coffee shops maybe even the beach is a bit bigger but Warbiswick is every bit as beautiful and every bit as nice as Southwold it's a great spot to spend the day what makes Warbiswick and Southwold so special is that for each of them there's a single road going specifically to each town, to one to Warburswick and then a separate road to Southwold. So the roads getting to each town don't lead anywhere else apart from that town. So there can't be any more development in each of the towns. There won't be any through roads being built or anything else. So they completely stay locked in time. So Warburswick and Southwold, they've barely changed in 80 years. And that, that is part of the charm of them. So the bike's parked up five minutes that way. And I thought I'd get the SISAP app out to have a look at what's going on with my bike. So I can see battery voltage 12.8, but more interestingly than that, I can see if I click on the map, the exact route I've just taken from Ipswich to Warburswick. And I can then share that exact route with friends or myself, or I can save that exact route. So if I have a brilliant ride and I want to save it, I just save that exact route. Then go back out of here, press on here and it takes me back away from there. I can see the exact distance I've done, how long I've been stopped for, and how long I rode for. Now the bit that is the most of interest to me, and that's everything related to security. So. If I press find, there we go. That will find exactly where my bike is. And that just takes you to Google. So you click find your bike. It then takes you onto the Google app and it will actually direct you exactly to where your bike is. Is it weird that I want someone to try and steal my bike or at least touch my bike? I want to get a ping on my phone. Before we head home, gear for the day. Blackbird, Blackhawk jacket. This actually has all the padding at the moment, so this is how it looks. But if you get this jacket, this is a medium. I'm six foot one, 80 kilos. They come from Australia, it's an Australian company. So I would say, don't, don't oversize. It's almost worth sizing down for these because this is a medium. I wouldn't want it any bigger at all. Trousers, RST Kevlar trousers. TCX X-Blend boots, two helmets on the floor. That's DMD and AGV with two gloves somewhere as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.